I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and today I'm back with the 1967 Austin Cooper S. In the last video, I got the car running and driving again, and today I'm going to start by installing a brand new power brake booster. Underneath the bonnet, you can see this pipe that has been added. This has been added to bypass where the original brake booster sat. Let me show you on another Cooper S. Here is my white Cooper S, and right here is the brake booster. The vent hose is kind of in the way. With the vent out of the way, we can see how that bracket holds the brake booster to the inner fender. So before I can install the new brake booster, I need to transfer the brackets from the old booster to the new one. There's also a fitting here for engine vacuum that I'll need to transfer, as well as probably this fitting here on the back for the brake line. This fitting here does take a 15 16 wrench. And it's really stuck on there. There's not enough room to get the closed end on there. There's a crush washer there. Okay, I think I'm ready to try to test fit this in there. To prep the car for the brake booster, I need to cut the zip tie and take this bypass line out. This is going to spill brake fluid, so I want to try to catch it the best I can. So it looks like it's going to fit in there about like that. I think I want to hook the brake lines up first because it will be a lot easier to get them lined up and get them started straight if the brake booster is not held to the car first. Looks like this rear adapter does not fit this line, so I'm not sure why someone had put that on there. Now I can line these brackets up. Now that I have them fed through, I can push down on this bracket to hold the bolts, but put the nuts on them. Now I just need to tighten everything up. Now I will need a vacuum hose to connect up to the brake booster. And it looks like they blocked off the original nipple with this hose right here. So I'll just disconnect this, run a hose from here, over to the booster. Now I can bleed the brakes and I'm done under the bonnet. If we get down here and we look at the Cooper at this angle, it is leaning towards the passenger side. So I need to take the hydrostatic pump and pump the passenger side back up. You can see the difference up there against the garage door. Get that passenger side back up to the proper ride height. If you want to see the tutorial that I made about using the hydrostatic pump, click in the link above. Looks like I went a little too far.
I think that looks good right there. That's all I have time for today. You will be seeing this car again in a month. I have a very special video planned that this car will be in. So if you want to see me do more classic mini videos, comment below and click subscribe.